Hello guys, welcome to my YouTube channel. If you are new to my channel, please subscribe to my channel, like this video and press the bell icon. Angular 18 has been released with some new features. In this video, you will learn about these features and how to implement them. Open angular.dev website, which is now the new home for Angular developers. Click here to open this link. Here you can read about all the new features. The main feature is the experimental support for zoneless change detection. Angular uses a library called zone.js for triggering change detection. However, this library comes with several developer experience and performance downsides. Now with the Angular 18, you can use provide experimental zoneless change detection in your Angular 18 application for zoneless change detection. I have installed an Angular 17 app, which we will update to Angular 18 later. If I type the command ng version, you can see that the Angular CLI version is 17.3.0. I have opened this project in VS Code and created a component called Zone Demo with inline template flag, which will include template inline in the zone demo.component.ts file. Here, I've created a property named message of type string, initially set to Angular 17 tutorial. Then, within the ng on init lifecycle hook, I've utilized set timeout to simulate an asynchronous task. After a delay of 2 seconds, the message is updated to Angular 18 tutorial. This demonstrates the use of Angular's lifecycle hooks for initializing component properties and handling asynchronous operations. Then we implement onInit and import it from at Angular slash core. In the template we display the value of the message property. Then in app.component.html I have added app zone demo selector. In app.component.ts file I have added zone demo component in the imports array and imported it. Now open your terminal and type the command ng serve to run our app. Go to your browser. Navigate to localhost colon 4200. You will see the message Angular 17 tutorial, then after 2 seconds, it changes to Angular 18 tutorial. Reload the page and you will see the same output. Open console in developer tools and type zone and you will see global zone object, which means that our Angular app is using zone.js library. When you use set timeout or any other asynchronous operation inside an Angular component, Zone.js is responsible for detecting the asynchronous tasks and triggering change detection appropriately. Now to use the zoneless feature, we need to update our app to Angular 18. Open the URL, angular.dev slash update dash guide. Here you will see the guide to upgrade your Angular app to Angular 18. Here you can select the complexity of your app and the dependencies to see the information to update your app. Then click on this button. Here you can see the guide to update our Angular 17 app to Angular 18. Angular 18 supports Node.js version 18.19.0 and newer. Then we need to run this ng update command to update our app to Angular 18. Angular 18 supports TypeScript version 5.4 or newer. First check Node.js version installed in your system. Click here and select command prompt to open a new command prompt. Now type the command Node-V and press enter. You can see that the Node.js version is 20.11.1. Copy this command. Paste the command in your command prompt and press enter. Make sure you have a high-speed internet connection, as you might encounter errors while updating your app. It will take some time to update our app to Angular 18, so please wait until the download is complete. Now you will be asked to select the migrations that you would like to run. Just press space key and then press enter to proceed further. Our app has been successfully updated to Angular 18. Open package.json file. Here you can see that the Angular version is 18.0.1 in dependencies and in dev dependencies, Angular DevKit and Angular CLI version is 18.0.2. Open app.config.ts file. Now to make our Angular 18 app a zoneless app, we need to add provide experimental zoneless change detection in the providers array. 
Add provide experimental zoneless change detection in the provider's array and import it from at Angular slash core. Open Angular.json file. Remove zone.js from polyfills array. Open the terminal in which the server is running. Press Ctrl plus C to stop the server and restart the server using ng serve command. Go to your browser. You can see that the message Angular 17 tutorial is not changed after 2 seconds. Now if you type zone in the console, you will see an error, zone is not defined because we have removed zone.js from our Angular 18 app. Reload the page and you will see no change. Now to fix this we will use signal. Open zone demo.component.ts file. Duplicate this line and comment out the first one. Now convert the message property into a signal. Add signal keyword, then set its initial value Angular 17 tutorial in parentheses. Import signal from angular slash core. Duplicate this line and comment out the first one. Now to change the value we will use set and in parentheses add the new value, angular 18 tutorial. In the template add parentheses after message, as it is now a signal. First we have converted the message property into a signal. Then we have used set to change the value of message signal. After that we have added parentheses to message as it is now a signal. Go to your browser. Reload the page and now you will see that the value of message now changes from Angular 17 tutorial to Angular 18 tutorial after 2 seconds. Now let's see the second feature, fallback content for ng content. Let's create card component to demonstrate this feature. In your terminal, type the command ng g c card and press enter to create card component. In the card title, we use ng content element that serves as a placeholder for content with the class card title. In the card body, we use ng content element that serves as a placeholder for content with the class card body. In the card footer, we use ng content element that serves as a placeholder for content with the class card footer. In card.component.css file, I have added some CSS code to style the card, card title, card body, and card footer. In the app.component.html file, I have added app card selector and inside it there are three parts, a title, a body, and a footer, each labeled with their content. Add card component in the imports array and import it in app.component.ts file. Go to your browser and you will see card component with card title, card body, and card footer. With Angular 18, ng content element can contain default content. Open card.component.html file. Add default title in the ng content element with the class card title. Now comment out the first div element with card title class in app.component.html file. Go to your browser and you will see the default title from card component is displayed. Comment out the div elements with card body and card footer. Add default content in the ng content elements with the class card body and card footer. Go to your browser and you will see default title, default body and default footer from the card component. 
The fallback content feature allows you to easily define a dedicated fallback content for each NG content element in your component. Now, let's see the new feature for forms called Unified Control State Change Events. Let's create post form component to demonstrate this feature. In your terminal, type the command ng, g, c, post form and press enter to create post form component. In the post form component, I have created a form group called post form using Angular's reactive forms approach. Inside this form group, there are two form controls, title and body, each initialized with an empty string as their default value. These form controls represent the input fields for the title and body of a post. In the ng on init, we use the events property to subscribe to a stream of events for form controls. Within the subscribe function, we can now access the information about an event using the event parameter. The touch change event will be fired when the form element loses focus. The pristine change event will be fired when the control's pristine state changes. The value change event will be fired when the value of a control changes. The status change event will be fired when the control status changes. The form submitted event will be fired when the form is submitted. The form reset event will be fired when the form is reset. Then in the imports array, I have added reactive forms module and imported it. I have also imported pristine change event, status change event, touch change event, value change event, form submitted event, form reset event and form group from angular slash forms. In the postform.component.html file I have created a form using the postform form group. This form includes input fields for a title and a body, both linked to their respective form controls using the form control name directive. Additionally, it has buttons for resetting and submitting the form. Go to your browser. Click in the title field and then click outside the field and you will see touch true in the console. Now in the body field, enter some text and you will see different events are fired. Now enter some text in both the title and body fields and then click on the reset button and you will see reset form event is fired. Now enter data in title and body field and click on the submit button and you will see form submitted event is fired. There is a new command added in Angular 18 to run the app, ng-dev. Open the terminal in which the server is running. Press Ctrl plus C to stop the server and type ng-dev command to run the app. Go to your browser and you will see that our app is still running with the new command. There are some other new features like, route redirects as functions, which we will see in some other video. In this video, we learned about some of the new features of Angular 18. Thanks for watching. Please like and share this video and subscribe to my channel. I will see you in next tutorial, till then stay safe.